1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. There we go. Very familiar story. I'm sure just about everyone in this room has heard this story before of David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Now, I don't think a, a passage of Scripture should become so familiar to us that it no longer speaks to us. So I want, I want you to listen with an open mind and an open heart and uh, see what God has for you tonight. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now, this morning, everyone was hungry. Now, this afternoon, everyone's sleepy. All right. So I, I don't plan on keeping you long, uh, but I do feel like the Lord has some, something for us this afternoon. 1 Samuel chapter 17. The food was great. I, I wanted to eat so much more, but if I kept eating, I was going to fall asleep while I was preaching. So that wouldn't have been a good move. All right? But 1 Samuel chapter 17, just going to read two verses here in verse number 31. It says, and when the words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Lord, I thank you once again for giving us another opportunity to be here in your house this afternoon, God. And I thank you for the, the preaching this morning, God, and the singing this morning, God. It certainly was an encouragement to me, God. And I thank you for the hands that prepared the meals, God. I thank you for a church that has a, a church full of servants, God, and people who are active and want to be involved in the ministry. God, I pray just help us now just for these next few moments, God, as we look into your word. God, I pray you'll begin to speak to hearts. God, I pray you'll fill me with your spirit. God, hide me behind the cross so you are the only one that's seen here tonight. God, I pray you continue to bless and we give the praise for it. In your name we do pray. Amen. The story of David begins in 1 Samuel chapter 16. God is in search of a king. And God sends the prophet Samuel to the house of Jesse looking for a king and not just the average king, not just your average man. God said that he wanted the king of Israel to be a man after his own heart. And when, when Samuel first gets to the house of Jesse, Samuel begins to look at the oldest. He looks at Eliab. He looks at Shaman. He goes through the list. And God has said, I have chosen none of these. And they almost forgot about David. But before Samuel began to evaluate all of these men, God taught him a very valuable lesson in 1 Samuel 16, verse number 7. It says, For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. I want you to understand something tonight. When God looks at a person, God sees a place that only he can see. You know, you may look at me and say, oh, that's a nice tie or oh, that's a nice suit. You may see my dress shoes or whatever. But when God looks at me, he sees a place in me that you can't see. And when God looks at you, he sees a place in you that I cannot see. So God told him, don't look at how tall he is. Don't look at how muscular he is. Don't look at how sharp he is. Look at his heart. I'm not looking on the outward appearance. I'm looking at his heart. And at first, when all the um, first nine sons were evaluated from Jesse, David, he was overlooked. And Samuel asked Jesse, do you have any more sons? And they said, oh, well, Jesse, he's just in the, I mean, David, he's just in the back of the field watching those few sheep. And David, he was overlooked. But I'm so glad, even in my own life, that oftentimes when you're overlooked by men, it's so encouraging to know that God still sees you. And they looked at David. And when they looked at David, they said, David, he's just a simple shepherd boy. But when God looked at David, God saw David as a king. When God sees a person, God does not just see them where they are. God sees them where he wants to take them. And God saw David's future in his present. <laughs> and David now, in 1 Samuel chapter number 16, when he came before Jesse, God told, I mean, when he came before Samuel, God told Samuel to arise and anoint him king. Not soon after David was anointed king, an evil spirit comes before Saul. And this was an evil spirit. And Saul, it's so amazing to me. Saul said these words, find me a man. Seek me out a man. And he's looking for someone to come and play a musical instrument to help soothe that evil spirit. But out of all of the men in Israel, they choose a 17 year old boy. I always tell our youth group in your boyhood days, there should be some manhood ways. You may you may be you may just be a teenager, but you ought to carry yourself like a young man. And though they were looking for a man to come before the king, David was such a mature and such a godly young man that he was chosen over the men. And I love they gave a little biographical sketch. For David before he came before Saul, they said in verse number 18 of chapter 16, then answered one of the servants and said, behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and playing. He's a skillful man, a mighty valiant man. He's a strong man, a prudent. He's prudent in matters. He's a smart man, a comely person. He's a sharp man. But I love this last one. The Bible says that the Lord is with them. He's a spiritual man. You know, we can go through a lot of phases in life and we can accumulate a lot of things. We can get all the degrees. We can get, 
the, the most money in our bank account. We can get the nicest house, the nicest car. But if you get all those things and you don't have the Lord with you, you have missed out on the most important thing life has to offer. They said the Lord is with David. When we get to 1 Samuel chapter number 17, we have the scene of a battlefield. On one side of the mountain, you have the Philistines. On the other side of the mountain, you have the children of Israel. And in the middle of the valley, you have big head Goliath. And Goliath, he's standing there in the middle of the valley. And this is what Goliath is saying. Send me out a man to fight me. I mean, he's running down God. He's talking trash. He's talking bad. Send me out a man to fight me. Now, Goliath, he's not your average man. <laughs> Goliath, he's over 10 feet tall. Look, I, I love basketball. If Goliath walked into a basketball gym, he could dunk the basketball without jumping. He's over 10 feet tall. Goliath, he's carrying his armor, he's carrying his sword and his shield, and all of his armor, it weighed over 100 pounds, and he's wanting to fight while holding 100 pounds of equipment. Send me out a man to fight me, this big man is saying. No one moves. <laughs> no one budgets, no one goes for it. They're afraid and they're scared. But then David comes on the scene. And when David comes on the scene, he says, who, who is this guy that is defying the living God? Look, David, he's not stepping forth to fight so people can see him. He's not stepping forth to fight so people can look at him. He's coming to fight so God can be glorified in this situation. Amen. And David comes on the scene, and I love what he said in, the, in our text verse. He says, let no man's heart be fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Now, let's get this. David, he's not even in the army. David, he's not known as a, as a great warrior right now. One day they will say, Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his tens of thousands, but he's not there yet. David, he's not even a part of the military enforcement right now. But he goes to his king, and he says, King, thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. I tell you, that's something that we need today. And in case you haven't realized it, if you look at this generation, and if you look at society today, you can see without a doubt that the devil is on attack. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That, that's the devil's biggest goal. He wants to destroy and he wants to devour. He wants to destroy homes. He wants to destroy families. He wants to destroy a young person's potential to ever be used of God. And you may not be a preacher tonight. You may not be a missionary tonight. You may not be a pastor tonight, but you can go to your king. And I'm not talking about the king of a land. I'm not talking about the king of a country. I'm talking about the king of kings, Amen. the one that saved your soul, the one that died for you, the one that rose from the grave. You can go to your king and say, King, I may not be a preacher. I may not be a pastor. I may not be a missionary. But, King, I'm just a simple servant that's willing to fight. Just a very simple question tonight. Will you fight for your king? Will you stand and fight for your king? I just want to walk through the story of David and Goliath tonight and just look at some things about how David was able as a young man <laughs> to stand and fight for his king. First of all, we have to talk about some characteristics of a servant that's willing to fight. Some characteristics. Look at verse 17. Should I switch mics, uh, Pastor Brian? If you want to. Would that be better? If you want to use that one, you can. Okay, let's do that. I know that may be keeping you all awake. God might be in the sound system tonight. <laughs> we, can, we can switch it up. That better? Okay. Is he back there? Yeah, it's on. All right. First Samuel chapter 17. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, there we go. Verse number 17 says this, and I talk loud anyway, so I might not even need a microphone. Verse 17 says, And Jesse said unto David, his son, Take now for thy brethren ephah of parched corn, and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren. What's the characteristic of a servant that's willing to fight? You ready for this? This is really deep. A servant serves. I know that's deep. Just brace it. Just suck it in. He was a servant. Look, do you understand tonight that when David went to the battlefield, he did not go to the battlefield to fight Goliath. David, this is what I want you to do. David, I want you to take this corn, take this cheese, and take this bread to your brothers. David, basically, David, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take this grilled cheese sandwich and this popcorn to your brothers. Now, you know what most of us would have done? You know what I would have probably done? Um, 
excuse me, Dad. Uh, I don't mean to be rude, but I don't know if you read your Bible lately. But uh, in chapter 16, I was anointed king. Somebody should be bringing me grilled cheese sandwiches and popcorn. <laughs> am, am, I, am I being honest? Look, David, now, even though after he was anointed king, he still was a servant. Look, we all not let a, a position get to our heads. We, we become too big to do the little thing, too big to set up chairs, too big to vacuum a floor, too big to clean a bathroom. David, he was just anointed king. What's your first duty as a king? Carry this grilled cheese sandwich and carry that popcorn. He, he didn't even go there to fight, but he was a servant. And look now, as David took care of the little things, that's when God gave him a greater opportunity. Teenagers come to me, oh, oh, brother Ed, I want God to use me to be a testimony in my public school. Oh, oh, really? Really now? Take out the trash when your mom tells you to take out the trash. Well, take care of the little things, and as you take care of the little things, God will give you greater opportunity. That's exactly what happened with David. So David, he was serving. David, he was shouting. The Bible says that David, he, he came on the scene, and when everyone's afraid, when everyone's scared, the Bible says that David, he shouted for the battle. And these days, when it was time to fight, and it was, when it was time to have war, a man would stand up and give what they called a war cry. A man would just start to shout. A man, it's almost like a war pep rally. David initiated a war pep rally. The Bible says that David came and he shouted for the battle. And then he was shouting and then he was surrendered. Remember now, David, you're coming on this scene. You're just carrying grilled cheese sandwiches. You're just carrying popcorn. He, he, he sees Goliath running down his God. He sees Goliath talking bad about his God. And David looks over at the men, and the Bible says he shouted for the battle, but now, David, guess what time it is? Now it's time to fight. And you can't fight Goliath with the grilled cheese sandwich and popcorn in your hand. Look, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that he left the carriage in the hand of the keepers. He started putting some stuff, some stuff down. And what, what I find is, is so amazing in the Christian life, a lot of people don't want, want to get involved in the fight because the closer you get to fighting, the more stuff you have to put down in your life. Hey, hey, young, young person, I have to tell her, hey, you, you can, God can use you, but first you got to let go of that music. God can use you, but first you got to be in the house of God. God can use you, but first you got to learn how to tithe. As you start putting some stuff down, the closer you get to the fight, then you're putting yourself in a position where God can use you. David, he had to put some stuff down. And then he was saluting. The Bible says he ran over to the camp and he saluted his brothers. Now, this is so amazing to me because we know David, he has to salute his dad. If you don't salute dad, dad can get you. He can, he can put that belt on you if you don't salute dad. But David, why, why are you saluting your brothers? I think this shows something of, of David's character. See, you can always tell something about the character of a Christian by how they treat people that can't do anything for them. How you treat a person that can't do any. When that visitor comes in church, how do you treat them? When, 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 when someone comes into church for the first time or when someone can't really do anything for you, will you still help them? David now, his brothers, they can't do anything for him right now. But the Bible says he went to them and he saluted them. Characteristics. He had some good characteristics of a servant that was willing to fight. Then we get to, secondly, his courage. So David now, he decides that he's going to go and fight Goliath. But David, watch this now. The moment that David decided that he was going to fight Goliath, he was resisted. First, if you remember, he was resisted by his brothers. David, uh, you, I know the naughtiness of thine heart. You just came out here because you want to see the battle. And by the way, who did you leave those few sheep with? Look, David, you're so small now that we didn't even give you a lot of sheep. We just gave you a few sheep. Well, look, you will never do anything big for God without someone trying to remind you how small you are. It, it won't happen. And then David, he went from being resisted um, by his brothers. Then he was even resisted by the king. Now, this is so amazing to me. You ever read something in the Bible and you're just like, that does not make sense? No? Well, you're about to read it. Let's look at it, all right? 1 Samuel chapter 17, look at verse 33. After David says, thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine, this is what Saul said. He didn't say, oh, thank you, David. Thank you, David. You're willing to go out and fight. No one's willing. Watch what he says. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. And he, Goliath, a man of war, from his youth. I, I think, expect, this is for the young people now. I think, that, I think that the king said something that the devil wants you to believe. Watch this now. It, it, it really makes no sense. 
Uh, Goliath, David, you can't go and fight Goliath. You're just a youth. And by the way, Goliath, he's been fighting since he was just a youth. <laughs> he said he a man of war from his youth. Wait a minute. I got a question. If Goliath can fight for the devil for his youth, why can't David fight for God? And a lot of young people, and maybe even some here this afternoon, you think that you can't stand for God because you're youth. If you can live for the devil when you're young, why can't you serve God when you're young? If you can live an immoral lifestyle when you're young, why can't you live a holy lifestyle when you're young? You can take a stand for the devil. Why can't you take a stand for God? He was resisted. And get me now, you will never do anything big for God without someone trying to remind you how small you are. So after he was remiss, re resisted, then he was reminded. Wait a minute. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Later on in the chapter, he would tell us what the cause was, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Look now, the moment you are resisted by someone for taking a stand for God, you ought to remind yourself why you're standing. The, the cause is bigger than me. It's, it's bigger than Ed. This is so God can be glorified. Remember now, this is a championship fight. This isn't an all-out war. Hey, Goliath, if I win, your people come fight me. If you win, my people come fight you. Instead of us all having this all-out war, we're just going to have a championship fight. So look now, this was bigger than David. So David had to remind himself of why he was standing in the first place. You have reached a great point in your Christian life when you realize that it's bigger than you. And it's bigger than me. But it's so that God can be glorified. So David, he was resisted. He was reminded. Then he started recruiting. Look, he didn't just say, is there not a cause? And that's it. No, no, no. If you look at the next verse, it talks about how he went from one to the other to the other. He said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Get this now. When you find out a reason to fight, you ought to be exposing that reason.